Three secrets to running the 400 meters like a pro. What's good, today we're going over secrets to 400 meter success. My 400 meter videos have gotten a lot of traction and rightfully so. The 400 meter is a scary event, especially when you don't know what you're doing. But don't worry, after watching this video, you're not only gonna know how to run the 400 meter like a pro, but you're gonna know how to train for the 400 meters like a pro. And make sure you stay all the way to the end because missing one part could be the reason why you don't succeed. Okay, let's get started. We had a 400 meter strategy video that did really well. It helped a lot of people. Right, so just briefly to go over the strategy, we're at about 90% for 90 meters, okay? Could be 110 meters, could be 90 meters, could be 100 meters, but somewhere around there, and about 90%, okay? Then you wanna open up into what's called the float phase. And this is a phase where you're not, you're not putting any more effort into going fast, you're not pedal to the metal anymore, um, but you're not slowing down. So if you can picture a car in cruise control and People often overthink this, and the reason they overthink this is because of one of these three reasons, which we're about to go over, but I'll explain to you exactly how to get your float phase perfect and what you wanna work on really. For the float phase, a quick tip is that in order to, you don't want your speed to, to slow down or speed up. And if you watch any of the pros do it, it's, you're not gonna notice a change between their float phase, but they are in a float phase. And really what they're focusing on is getting a bigger stride length, longer stride length, and less focus on as quick of a turnover. Um, and we'll, we're going to go over why right now, right? So you break up the, the turn into two portions. Now we know that the turn is flat in reality, but we like to think of it as an uphill downhill portion. So what I said in my other 400 meter strategy video is that this is uphill, all right? So you pretend like you're running uphill, like you have a sled behind you, like you um, have a tire behind you, you're doing tire pulls or something of that nature. That's what the back stretch is like because right about here is where you're gonna start to think, oh crap, I'm only 200 meters done. Happens to a lot of people, don't worry about it, okay? And then now you have the downhill portion. And why is this downhill? Well, if you can picture yourself running downhill, what happens? You start running downhill, then your feet have to get really fast and then your body gets in front of you, right? You wanna make sure that um, you don't want to be leaning forward. You want to make sure that your shoulders are forward and that you're picking up your turnover again. Remember, we took focus off of turnover here and put it on stride length. And now over here, we're going to put focus on turnover and try to match stride length with it. You don't want to, to really compromise either of those too greatly, right? And just, I'm going to reiterate, this flow phase is not a slowing down phase. And if you have confusion about that, just watch the professionals. They do it really well. You can't really see a difference. Um, and so we're here, we come downhill, and now we're focused on, right, picking up our, our feet. Don't let our, don't let the monkey on our back. Don't let it, right? Now is where the lactic acid begins to build. And again, we're, we're briefly going to go over how to defeat this. Everyone's gonna have, be tired. Everyone's gonna feel that, that lactic acid right here. It's just a matter of how you deal with it, how your body processes it based on how you train. So again, we're about to go over that too. But so here we're focused on a lot of turnover and getting up big and using our arms, right? Our arms play less of a role here. We're just kind of floating. And here we're, we're, our arms come back into play a lot, right? We're, we're never here. We don't want to be up here again. We want to be swinging through naturally. But then when we come back through this way, now we're really digging into the arms, taking us home, right? So that we can finish. And then I told you here is where we become a, a we'll say a drummer boy. My coach would say, um, beat the drums, right? Beating the drums means if you have a drummer boy that does this, you want to be really getting those arms moving. Don't compromise turnover because what you're going to see is a lot of people start to look like they're running through mud. We don't want to get in the mud phase. We want to just power all the way through to the finish. Now, again, I know that this is easier on a whiteboard than in reality. Um, and a lot of that has to do with the way that we train. Moving into, I'm kind of bridging two videos that performed well together. Um, we have this kind of training pyramid that I think people had confusion with. Um, but don't worry, we're, we'll clarify some things. So preseason, all right, I'm sure, you know, I'm not sure when you're watching this video, if you're in season, these are just concepts to kind of grasp. Um, but preseason, you want to be doing no more than 2400 meter volume, no more than 2400 meter volume. I had a comment say like, are you crazy? 600 meter volume is enough. That's one of those 
get fast quick schemes to say that 600 meter worth of training um, is enough at the right time during the right season. Sure, 600 meters will, will help get you into your prime state. Um, and by, by 600 meters, you could think about like two times 300 or uh, three times 200, something that you want really high quality. When you're, when you're doing stuff like that, you want super high quality and you want a good amount of rest so that you can keep them high quality. But um, yeah, that's one of those get fast quick. It, it, honestly, it makes no sense, but um, I just wanted to address that really fast. So preseason, you don't want any more than 2,400 meters. In season, you don't want to be sprinting any more than 1,500 meters. And this is not all at once. This is, these are broken up into sets, right? I gave examples in the, in the other video, which I'll link to below. And then in peak season, you don't want to be sprinting any more than 1,000-ish um, um, meters. These are just guidelines. They're not, they're not rules. You're going to have coaches that have work different systems uh, uh, as far as different distances, but that's about where they should be. Um, and then again, I have the rest on this side. So preseason, you're going to, you know, four to six minutes rest. You're kind of working some oxygen deprivation training, learning how to be able to handle this part of our run, right? That's where this, this comes in. And then in season, six to eight minutes training because our quality has gone up um, significantly. The quantity has, has gone down significantly. So you want to add a little bit more rest, but we're still, you know, not allowing full recovery here. Um, again, focused on this portion of the race, well, really this portion of the race. And then peak season, you wanna start focusing on, um, I said in my other video too, this is where foot speed matters, foot speed. So I've talked about how the 800 meter is not good training for the 400 meter, which, which we can address um, in a second as well. But right here is where foot speed matters, and this is where um, well, really, when you're when you're in season, you'll you'll be working foot speed because the quality of our workouts has gone up. But but definitely in peak season, this is where this um, comes back to play a big role. So that's about the the training that you should be doing. And remember, like you can't be scared to hurt, right? And people that think that um, oh, like I can get just super high quality um, and 600 meters worth of work, uh, they're just scared to hurt at the end of the day. Um, and just imagine if I had you in a track meet and you ran the 400 and the 200, and then I asked you if you can do the four by one or the four by four, that's already 700, a thousand meters, right? So if you're training 600 meters worth of volume, um, yeah, I'm not going to labor on the point. It just was something that didn't make sense. So how do we get there? How do we, how do we make this effortless run? Not effortless. It's not gonna be effortless. How do we make it a run that's just progr programmed into our body? And the answer to that is going to be, all right, practice, of course, there's, there's no secret there. Um, knowing how to train, right? So when, when we are practicing, um, I have this quote here, don't think, just run. One of, the, one of the good comments I got was like, this is a great strategy, but at the end of the day, you should just be running. And that's true. You don't wanna be thinking hard while you're running. Um, and the way that you get around that is you, you, you make your training program, right, tailored to your events. So all of these distances, they're going to be, uh, we'll say like uh, six times 300, right, two times 250, somewhere around, some, some of these kind of workouts, right, eight times 150 with appropriate rest, right. I have a program for, for all of you that are interested is in the link, link below on how to do these properly. Um, but, but let's say I am doing a, a 300 meter workout, then maybe I want to work, um, 90, 90% for 90 meters, work on my float phase uphill and then start to get my downhill portion. Or let's say I'm doing two fifties. I want to work on, uh, starting here in my float uphill, downhill, finishing strong, or I'm working one fifties. I just want to work on the finish downhill, the acceleration, or it could be here, right? The start into the float. That's tip number one. Whenever you do get to the meet, you don't have to think as much because you've already programmed your body into knowing how to run this properly. And I'll take it one step further. If you, if you have your goal, which we went over in my program as well, if you have a goal date, right? My goal, I know that my goal is, uh, we'll say sub 50, which, which one of my commenters said their goal was. And um, let's say we need to run this in May. 
January, February, March, April, May. And we want to work backwards from, from our goal date of May, we'll just say 23rd. I don't know, I made that up. But if we know that our goal is sub 50, then these workouts should not only be tailored to the strategy, but the time that you're, that you're finishing these 150s, these 250s, these 300s, um, these, these 60 meter sprints for speed, the time that you're gonna base these on is going to be based around this uh, 50 sec sub 50 second 400 meter goal. Um, and, and again, you can break it down further into, okay, if I wanna run sub 50, I know that my 200 meter probably has to be, I don't know, maybe around 23 seconds or so, right? So, so you break it down into smaller actionable steps in order to, to reach your goal. And that's, that also comes with, with just practicing. So the second tip on how to run the 400 like a pro and how to have success is that you want to peak at the right time. Okay, I'm gonna touch on another comment that I received, which was that you only really wanna to train top end speed, top end speed, top end speed, top end speed. Okay, well, I mean, what happens when you, when you train only top end speed, you know, whether you're, you're a track person that's training 10 months out, right? We start our training in October-ish, and we don't end until June, July, and the pros go even further than that, right? Um, whenever you train only top end speed, or even if, if you're talking about the 12-week program I made, let's say that for full 12 weeks, you're focused on top end speed only. Um, first of all, the term top end speed is uh, uh, neglecting a lot of the aspects of track, but we won't go there right now. But if you're only training top end speed, not only do you increase your in chance of, of injury, but you will not peak at the right time. You've got to learn to load and unload properly, which is why this is a pyramid, right? If we're only focused on the top of the pyramid, um, our top end speed will come three weeks after we begin training. So the people that say only focus on top end speed, those are the people that perform well in February whenever the season goes through July. And then they can't figure out why they're not running as fast as they did at the beginning of the year. Um, that's why. So again, this pyramid says it well. Uh, the program I have will help you teach you how to load and unload. And the concept with loading and unloading is you have your baseline, right? I load you and then I unload you so that your peak is above your baseline. Okay, and now it's a new PR. This is what we're gonna call a PR. So then what do I do once we hit our PR uh, during spring break, right? We had a big track meet. We got to travel for it. Now I load you again, okay? And the depth of which I can load you, if I wanna take you all the way down here, depends on the base of our pyramid, right? This should make sense. I can only build as high as my foundation is. And this is our foundation. And if I wanna take your loading phase all the way down here, because I want you to come back and PR up here for a new personal record at your desired date, I have to first build a good base. Otherwise, when I take you down here, this is injury. If you don't do this right, this is injury. So again, this is in my, my 12 week program that'll, that'll be in the link below. And then the last thing that I'll say that I'll probably say in every video is that if you want to be a good 400 meter runner, you have to learn how to run the 100 and the 200. They will both give you signs about where your strengths and weaknesses are. If you're very good at the four, or excuse me, if you wanna get better at the four, but you really suck at the 100, you know that this is your problem, foot speed. I can already tell you that when you get here, you'll be strong throughout the race, and then the people with the faster foot speed will beat you. Um, and you can go vice versa. Let's say you're good at the 100, but um, you die at 70, right? I know that probably your 200 meters is suffering or your 400 meters is suffering. Uh, and then we'll touch on this as one of the last points, but what about the 800? Again, I said 800 meter training is not 400 meter training. And the reason why is that you work a different energy system when you train for the 800. You just do, and it's an energy system that you do not use when you're running the 400. If you notice all of these workouts, we, we won't go anything further than the 350. Why? Because we're trying to train an energy system at a certain quality level. And so when you tap into 800 meter training, 
you're not going to have work the right energy systems. You're going to be able to go for long and you're going to be strong, but you will not have the right foot speed. Now this, this is not as big of a deal. Uh, the younger, so the younger you are, the least, the least less big deal it is. The older you get, the more big deal it becomes. So youth track. Yeah. You're going to have people that are good at the the one, the two, the four, the eight, they're just kind of, you know, the, the prodigies of the sport. Um, as they get older, they're going to become more refined in high school. You can have an 800, 400 person. That's excellent at both in college. You can have an 800 person on the four by four, uh, relay. You can have him do the open four, but is he competing in the finals at nationals? No. Right. And then in professionals, as you know, it's probably like two events if you're, if you're elite, but really you're, you're focused on, on one event. The 400 meter uh, champion is the 400 meter champion. There was an exception that I didn't know about from the seventies. Um, uh, the Cuban horse, I believe. So thank you for my person who commented about the Cuban horse taught me a lesson. Um, I do like to think that the game has evolved since then, as we haven't seen another four, eight double, uh, at the Olympic level since. So, I think that's just the evolution of the game. So that's the three, the third, the third tip is you want to be good at the 100, 200, 400, depending on your level. 800 may not be the worst thing, but it's definitely not going to get you to running the 400 meters like a pro. Like I said, if you want to learn how to do all these things, touch on all these points that we talked about, I've got a 12 week program in the link below. And if you love this video, I know you're going to love this next video.